Hello and welcome to another episode of Driveway Dudes. We have a remote control hovercraft which runs on eight 1.2 volt 700 milliamp batteries wired in series. And they are NICAD batteries and they've basically given up the ghost. So what we're going to do is we're going to use across the counter shop bought batteries here. They are 1.2 volts rechargeable NIMH and they're 2600 milliamps. We're going to wire them into series and put them into the hovercraft and see how it goes. All right, this is the battery pack here, as you can see, and I've already opened it up and broke it down. But just to show you that it's 700 milliamp 9.6 volts which means that there's eight 1.2 volt batteries are joined in series plus the minus plus the minus plus the minus and so on and i'll just turn it over here and you can see the batteries there they're in pretty poor state now i've already separated them and the way they were joined together was with a little metal tab as you can see here so what we need to do is we need to replicate that for the replacement batteries so we'll just push them off to one side and these are the replacement batteries now the configuration again would be plus minus plus to minus then it would come across here and it would be plus to minus plus to minus so we have minus up here, follows on to plus, to minus, plus to minus. And so on. And the connection lead will go from the plus here and the minus or negative here across to the connection for the RC. So what we need to do now is we need to join these all together and it will bring it up to 9.6 volts. Now when you're joining in series you retain the output which is the 2600 milliamps. If you were joining them in parallel you would be multiplying the 2600 by 8 and you would have 1.2 volts and 8 times 2600 milliamps whereas we only need the 2600 milliamps but we need 9.6 volts so the 1.2 1.2 1.2 1.2 1.2 etc 1.2 multiplied by 8 is 9.6 so let's go ahead now in order to get the little joints together or make up some tabs what I've used is an old aerosol can now it has it has paint on it so we we'll need to scrape that paint off and we'll also need to cut it to size. With the tab all up down we're going to have to cut them to size and so we'll be able to connect them onto the batteries. All right that's the seven little tabs I've made up and you may find uh, they, they don't look exactly the, uh, the same width but not to, re not to worry too much. Also, what you'll need to do to enable the solder again to stick to the batteries themselves, what you'll need to do is you'll need to roughen up the positive and negative terminals on the battery. So with a little bit of paper again, just rub the terminal to rough it up a bit and on the positive and the negative and as you can see it's now ready to be soldered and we just do that with the other seven I have all the batteries positive and the negative terminals uh, sanded and roughened up a bit to be able to take the solder with the negative end soldered 
we now need to solder it onto the positive here and then it has to bend back onto itself so that it follows this configuration so what you do then is you bend this down and then solder this onto this here when that's complete then you just fold them in together and you will end up with a connection like that now another thing to note is as you're going along what you do it's a good idea to check your voltage so you make sure that you have a connection otherwise you'll be wasting your time you could have the whole lot done and one of the pieces of solder or one of the tabs is not working so what we do is we should have a minimum of 2.4 volts here so we'll just check it now and we'll just see we have 2.56 volts so we have a circuit the tabs that I'd planned on using didn't turn out as expected so what I've decided to do is I've decided to use a little bit of cable that I had I just happened to have some bits of cable left over from previous projects and lucky enough I have seven different colors it's seven connections that you'll need on the pack so now what you'll have to do is you'll have to strip back both ends and thin them with the solder so we'll put it in there and strip it turn it around and strip it again out the other side so we'll just push it back through now I just forgot to mention that the little bits of wire here they need to be about one inch long or two and a half centimeters and that's what you'll end up with a piece like that so once you go ahead and do the seven of them and then thin them with some solder using the solder iron and then you can get stuck in starting to stick them on. Right that's all the soldering done and now we're going to test to make sure that we have connection or we have power going through. So with the multimeter we'll just switch it on there and it's set for 20 volts DC just put the negative into the negative and the positive into the positive and there you can see we're getting 10.36 10.37 volts now I had pre-charged these prior to doing any work so we have a full charge there so that's good now it's a good idea as you solder each one to make sure that you have uh, passing the current and you'll see them adding up 1.2, 2.4 etc etc. So now we have in excess of 9.6 volts and 2600 milliamps. Now the next thing to do is to put it into some sh uh, shrink sleeving. So I purchased some online and I cut it to size and we can see here we're going to we'll just fit it in and then we'll shrink it down. Now just before I heat up this heat shrink I'm going to line I'm going to just going to take the batteries back out again because they're all loosely moving around as soon as the heat shrink hits it and compresses it'll push the batteries every which direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some good old duct tape and put the duct tape on it to keep it in shape. Right, that looks about ready to motor along. So we'll just put it back in there now. 
and we'll see what happens. I try and even it out and hopefully this heat shrink will pull it down and won't distort the shape of the pack. So I'm using the trusty heat gun that I have for decorating. We'll give it a go. Yeah, by the looks of it, I think I was better at soldering than I was putting on heat shrink. But the proof is in the pudding. So now what we'll do is we're going to fit it into the little RC unit and just happens to be a little hovercraft and we'll see how it performs. Okay so here we have the little hovercraft and what we're doing is we're going to fit the battery pack. Now I've had to trim the I've had to trim around the edges here that it was overlapping and it was catching and there's little stops inside in the compartment for the other battery pack which is ever so slightly smaller so this one here is going to fit now so what we'll do then is we'll hook it up and we'll sit there and then we'll just slide it into place and looks good just push that in out of the way and then we'll just put the little cover back in and fingers crossed That's another job done and as I was saying probably less than sit down and add it up maybe less than now you can buy a ready-made battery pack online sent to your door and will probably cost you about 10 15 20 30 euro but if you could do it yourself why not save yourself some money if you buy the batteries in bulk you can get them for as little as about 15 20 cents each and you could have a little cottage industry making battery packs for your friends well thanks for watching feel free to comment like share and subscribe and you can also find us on facebook twitter blogger and instagram thank you